All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the next video on cell organelles. So let's go through and get started on this next video. So what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at the cell. And really our goal here is to understand the structure, the function, and the purpose of all the organelles and how they interact with each other within the cell. So we're going to start off with the nucleus. Let's go through and look at the nucleus and try to delve into its purpose, its function, and its structure. Now the nucleus is going to be found in the center of the cell. And it's going to be the most obvious thing that we see when we look at a cell under the microscope. Now its structure, well it's a membrane system that contains the genetic material necessary for the cells. So they're either going to be in chromosome format if they're going through mitosis or meiosis, but most of the time they're going to exist as chromatin where they're wound around the histones. So if we're thinking about the function of the nucleus, well the entire function is to protect the DNA from degradation and mutations. Remember, this genetic material is super duper important for us to go through and protect because it's the blueprint and it's really the backbone and the software for our body. So protecting that DNA is really, really important. Now, let's delve into chromosomes and chromatin. Well, chromosomes and chromatin are going to be found in the center of the nucleus. And really, they are complex um, DNA. It's a complex nucleotide, the polymer there, and it's bound to proteins that we call histones. So when we're thinking about this, the entire purpose of the nucleus is to hold this genetic information, and this genetic information is important for the human body to go through and function. Now when we talk about chromosomes, well chromosomes are super densely coiled packs that only form during meiosis and mitosis. So it's important to differentiate the difference between the two. Chromatin is the normal form that the DNA exists in in the nucleus, and chromosomes only exist. The ones that we see in the center here, the X and the Y, are only going to exist during cell division or mitosis or meiosis. Now next is going to be the nucleolus. So let's go through and look at the nucleolus in a little more detail. Now, the nucleolus and the nuclear envelope are this small, dense region within the nucleus, and this is where the ribosomes for the cells are produced. Now, when we talk about the nuclear envelope, well, this is the double membrane lipid bilayer. So we're talking about that membrane that allows the protection of the DNA to uh, occur, and it facilitates that protection. Now, within that membrane, there are nuclear pores. Sometimes we need to go through and get genetic and material and information out. This is where the RNA is going to go through and be expelled from the envelope to go through and make our proteins. So when we're thinking about the entire nucleus of the cell, well, it consists of the nucleolus, which is going to be where the ribosomes are synthesized, the nuclear envelope, which is that lipid bilayer that we see that protects the DNA, the pores that go through and allow the RNA to uh, move in and out of the cell, and then the nucleus itself, which is protecting that DNA. And we can see here in the image that pores are just going to be these tiny little slots that allow the RNA and proteins out of the nucleus. The next organelle that we're going to look at is the smooth and rough endoplasmic reticulum. So let's go through and look at the endoplasmic reticulum and then differentiate between the two. Now the endoplasmic reticulum, well this is going to be found just outside the nucleus. And its structure is going to consist of member, or membranous tubules and sacs. Now its entire function is going to be for the synthesis of lipids and proteins and other materials from the cell. And it allows it to go through, modify those lipids and proteins, and then transport them to other parts of the cell. So the reticulum, the endoplasmic reticulum, is really, really important for protein and lipid modification. And there's two categories of endoplasmic reticulum that we go through and discuss. So we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and this does not have ribosomes attached to it. And the reason it appears smooth is because it doesn't have these ribosomes. Its main function is to synthesize hormones, lipids, and carbohydrates. And it's really going to allow for... Um, filtering of toxic materials out of your cells. So the smooth ER contains collections of enzymes that are going to go through and perform these specialized tasks. So in the liver, we're going to have lots and lots of cells with 
large quantities of smooth ER because they're going to detoxify any drugs or toxins that get in your body. Muscle cells are going to need them because they regulate and release calcium ions which are necessary for muscle contraction. The endocrine system needs it because it makes the steroids which are necessary for homeostasis. And then the ovaries and testes have large amounts of smooth ER because they need to release this estrogen and testosterone hormones, which remember are lipids, into the body. So the smooth ER, really its main function here is maintaining homeostasis via the hormones, the lipids that we've learned about before, and then also going through and detoxifying any toxins within our blood system. Now the rough ER, well the rough ER's main function is going to be to go through and modify proteins. And if we look specifically at the rough endoplasmic reticulum here, we see all these little tiny dots. Those are the ribosomes that are producing and modifying the proteins in our cells and in our body. So if we're thinking about function here, it is abundant in cells that make large amounts of proteins. And the proteins are necessary to be secreted and released from the cell to go through and make up the solid parts in our body. So proteins are destined for other locations like the Golgi, where they will be modified and shipped out more. But the entire function of the rough endoplasmic reticulum is complex protein modification. So we're taking those alpha, those beta, we're going from secondary to tertiary to quaternary structure, modifying those proteins, creating those disulfide bridges, and then going through and shipping those proteins elsewhere in the body and in the cell. Now the next organelle is going to be the mitochondrion. So let's go through and look at the mitochondrion in a little more detail. Now, the mitochondria, this is going to be the one that students remember the most from middle school, and it's the powerhouse of the cell. So this is the most numerous organelle found in the cytoplasm of all cells. Now, its structure is an ovular-shaped organelle. It looks very similar to a bacteria, which we're going to go through and talk about. And it has these little folded membranes within the mitochondria that we call cristae. Now, if we're thinking about function, well, they're converting chemical energy in food into energy that we can use in our body. So we're specifically going through and we are taking uh, glucose and converting it into ATP. Glucose is, remember, for short-term short energy. And we take this short-term energy, we put the glucose into the mitochondria, and then we produce ATP, which, again, we will learn about later, and produce power via this mitochondria and energy. So the mitochondria is really, really important because it gives us all the energy within our body. Now the next organelle is going to be the ribosomes, these small little dots that we see within the cytoplasm. So let's go through and look at the ribosomes. Now ribosomes, we've had a couple conversations about ribosomes, but haven't really delved into what they are. So ribosomes are these little tiny dots. We see them on the rough ER, and we also see them free-floating in the cytoplasm. Now this structure here, they are small, green-like. Um, they have a large and a small subunit, but they look like these little tiny dots within the cytoplasm. And their entire function is to go through and produce proteins. They're going through, we're taking amino acids together, forming polypeptides to go through and produce those proteins. And these are, again, one of the most numerous organelles found in the cytoplasm of the cell. So really what we're doing is we're taking our mRNA, we're reading out the code that we need from our DNA. This is the central dogma theory, which again we will see soon, and we are going through and producing proteins. For right now, all I want you guys to remember here is ribosomes are producing proteins in the body. Then they ship those proteins to the endoplasmic reticulum in the Golgi where they are modified. Our next organelle is going to be the Golgi apparatus. So let's go through and look at the Golgi. Now the Golgi... The Golgi is going to be found within the cytoplasm, further out from the endoplasmic reticulum. The reticulums are butted up against the nucleus. The Golgi is generally out a little bit farther. And the structure of the Golgi is this, it's this membrane. Um, it looks like a folded pancake stack. And its entire function is to process, package, and secrete uh, products for all of our organelles. So we're modifying packaging proteins, sometimes lipids. And we're modifying the materials that have gone from the ER now to the Golgi so that way they can either be released into the cell or released outside of the cell for other purposes. 
and we can kind of see the Golgi is very similar to the endoplasmic reticulum, but it's almost like a complex packaging center, packaging and shipping center outside of this cell. The next organelle is going to be our centrioles. Let's go through and understand the purpose of centrioles in the cell. Now, centrioles, well, centrioles are going to be found within the cytoplasm only in animal cells. And their structure is going to consist of all of these little microtubules that go through and they kind of form together and they form this kind of, it almost looks like a, a pasta or a pinwheel pasta pattern here. And the centrioles are really, really important to organize cell division and facilitate cell division. They create this solid structure with the microtubules that allows for the cell to go through and separate from one cell into two cells. So this is going to be the end of the video. Let's go through, did you guys learn organelle structure and function for the organelles that we have discussed in this video? So this is going to be the end of the video. I will see you guys in class tomorrow.